This film was made as part of the Common Cause Research Project, which aims to understand how universities and black and minority ethnic communities build collaborations. Each of these films tells a different story of how these collaborations might work. They range from long-term partnerships to short-term projects and events. The films are designed to prompt discussion and reflection. We encourage you to ask, what questions might be learned for the future from these stories? Base culture research. This project sets out to map the impact and legacy of Jamaican popular music on British culture and identity. From 60s mods to 70s skinheads, punks to reggae to 80s ska music, drum and bass, dubstep and grime. British popular music culture would not be the same without this contribution. We're halfway through ish and looking back we're recognizing that to some extent we are creating our own competition. I am the learning manager and programmer for Black Culture Archives. So what that means is I oversee the public program as well as working really closely with universities as well to push and advocate for black British history in education. Initially I attempted to fund this exercise of exploring this contribution via Heritage Lottery and spoke to Paul Reed, director of uh, Black Cultural Archive, which at the time was applying for its own funding to do up this building that we're standing in. I came in probably like second year into the base culture project. Over the process of these large bids, they've stayed partners. We've developed specific relationships in the community and we've fine-tuned aspects of delivery. We were hoping one day to be as big as any other genre. A lot of people were coming from Jamaica to be a part of the English industry and seeing Dennis Brown, your Gregory Isaac. We were able to exchange um, contacts, network, and generally just kind of feed off each other in terms of the subject area. We both had an interest in sound systems. The more I looked into the musical journey of Garage, of Grime, it played a vital role in the development. The minimum number of films we'll come out with is about 65. These are individual um, first-person interviews on camera where we delve into the life and experience and memories of key individuals that have mapped the musical history. It's not my favourite sitting in front of the camera, no, but there are some things that are bigger than me and bigger than my emotion, and this is bigger than me. This is something that's going to be stored here and this is something we value as educators and I think that legitimacy um, goes a long way as well for the people that are entering that process. We just loved it. It was, it was um, our music and it gave us a sense of identity, uh, which was important because, you know, you were, you were living in a, a racially hostile environment. So we looked at film, um, uh, we looked at photography, um, we looked at audio in terms of music, in terms of just recording the voices. We look at text, so we're transcribing all the interviews and making that available. We also looked at the community voice being heard. I'd like to thank the Black Cultural Archives. I respect everything the panelists said. In some regards, you were a bit polite. We're also looking at how we skill up the community to create the very content that we're generating because it has to continue post the project in various aspects. There were various kind of uh, interviews that took place as well as taken on four volunteers that also helped to do some research. So two of those actually had access to our resources in the archives as well. So that was one way of getting sort of broader community to really engage with the material and sort of the historical content as well and comment on it. We have a community film being made by young people 
uh, because that made sense to have their perspective. What was the struggle? So we're bringing people into BCA and we're working with young people that the BCA have brought in and they're upskilling. So there's a challenge of working with uh, individuals where you're upskilling them, but you want to deliver a professional end result. What was missed? Hopefully nothing. But the reality is, there'll be lots that we missed. It's a small project. It's uh, trying to map an awful lot. Uh, what was the joy? One of the most exciting projects that I feel that we did was um, the collaboration with Kabaka Pyramid. And so we had Kabaka Pyramid come from the Caribbean um, on his tour and he did a, this amazing talk in our courtyard, um, obviously with their music and sound systems. And we had a conversation about sort of base culture then and now. So how it's kind of progressed and the influence that it's had on the UK. What was the struggle? We're working to a calendar that's pretty much fixed year on, whereas there are events that will pop up, and they do pop up events and will accumulate, um, accommodate the community, and tell us at the last minute, because it's very, you know, this is the young side of uh, the project, and it, in some instances it means getting a cameraman here, getting a, a film crew here um, at short notice, and there's a cost involved and there's planning and whatever and so on. But we found that um, as long as we're flexible, this works. What was a surprise? We invited Michael in to speak about Steel Pulse, which also, I guess, formed part of a uh, base culture. And they advertised for people to come and have a conversation with me about the making of the album. Uh, but I was told at the last minute that this was one, happening and two it was a paid event well one was slightly hacked off and then two my ego was shit what if no one turns up to my surprise it sold out we had a really good dialogue and conversation uh, with the audience about that particular contribution and the whole punk scene uh, surrounded that time setting up events around the subject area filming it putting it online has energized individuals small uh, companies or operations to want to do the same. We're not a commercial operation, um, but um, I call it competition. Uh, enterprise <laughs> um, has decided that they want to monetize some of these activities. There's even the promotion of winning the award, which went out, which the university put everywhere. We've won this big award. That came back to bite us in the form of individuals going, oh, I think you've paid off your mortgage now, or have you bought a new car, or yeah, that interview, well, I'm gonna to have to charge you for that interview. And I'm going, actually, that money doesn't go to me. Do you have a question you'd like to ask Michael? Mm, I do have one, actually. Knowing everything we know now, as a result of uh, this project, what next? What do we need to do to kind of take that next step, is it? Uh, again, is it kind of policy or is it looking at you know, a broader international conference where we're discussing kind of the state or the heritage of that music or is it um, thinking about how we can have uh, these musical influences recognised as a part of you know, British heritage? Do you have a question you'd like to ask Monira? Um, yeah, I think... <clears throat> If I was going to ask a question, and I'm trying to make it one question, it would be how this project got picked. Which courses actually exist where you look at black British culture? I think actually thinking about creating not just material, but academic courses, even degrees actually that reflect that interest. Is that something that would help to get local community engaged in sort of higher education? Because it's a topic that clearly people are passionate about and it's an important part of the heritage. If you are interested in finding out more about the project, please go to the Common Cause website.